Fox News at 9. Welcome to Ozarks Fox News at 9. I'm Jennifer Abreu. And I'm John Adams. We start off tonight with some top stories from around the nation. These stories are real new now. Bernie Sanders is running for president in 2020. The Vermont senator backed Medicare for all, free public college, and fighting climate change in the 2016 Democratic primary. Sanders finished second to Hillary Clinton in that race. The FBI now joining an investigation into a threatening letter sent to actor Jesse Smollett. The 36-year-old is suspected of sending the letter to himself before an alleged hate crime attack in late January. Chicago police are already investigating that incident, which Smollett is also suspected of having orchestrated. And Amazon is going green. The company says it wants 50 percent of its shipments to be carbon neutral by the year 2030. The initiative has a long-term goal of using 100% renewable energy for all Amazon infrastructure globally. Well, making local news now, a brick of marijuana was found in a Big Brothers Big Sisters donation bin causing employees to call the police. And as our Francis Lynn reports, this isn't the only incident that slowed down the nonprofit's work these past few months. Francis. The president of the Think Big Foundation told me they've been dealing with theft, vandalism, and finding unwanted items in donation bins, causing them financial burden instead of focusing on helping the kids. We had a group of volunteers out here processing clothing donations, and they found this bundle of marijuana. Tyler Moles with the Think Big Foundation says there's no way to know which donation bin it came from. I have no idea how to speculate who put it in there or why. I imagine whoever did was in trouble on more than one level. He says it's situations like these that slow down their work day. We called the police and the police came out and picked it up. They said it was about $3,000 worth of marijuana. But this isn't the only incident that's been slowing them down. We've had for the past few months someone's been coming in. At first they were just digging in the dumpster then it went came to a uh, taking the windshield wipers off our collection trucks. They even took a battery off of one of our collection trucks. They broke into a storage trailer. Not having windshield wipers on their collection truck, especially during winter weather, makes collecting donations difficult. We run a pretty tight schedule with our trucks to try to make sure we have these bins, 56 bins all over Springfield area. And we want to make sure every morning we pick up those bins. If anybody's left something outside the bin, which happens from time to time, we get it early before whoever owns the property sees it before it's, a, before it's an issue. So when they're unable to use their own vehicle, they have to send an employee to an auto parts store to get new windshield wipers. I mean, these little things, it sounds like, oh, you know, you're out 20 bucks for windshield wipers, but you're also out payroll time, fuel time, and opportunity cost on, on the pickup. We are competing with 2,000 other nonprofits in our region, so having our own sustainable revenue sources is, is pretty key. Trista Herzog with Big Brothers Big Sisters explains how the Think Big Foundation plays a significant role in their revenue. So when we have theft, or um, other nefarious activities that are happening in and around our warehouse. Uh, it's so important that we can stymie that and ensure that these programs stay vital um, for the kids that we're serving. For more information on how to volunteer or help in any way, visit our website at ozarksfirst.com. Thank you, Francis. We have a developing story for you now. A new report from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention say a brain-wasting disease that infects deer could possibly be contagious to humans. Chronic wasting disease, or CWD, has been something we've re reported on here a number of times now, but this new report has people everywhere talking, and our Jesse Enman is here to tell us why. Jesse. Well, guys, this CDC report is based on testing that they did back in 2017 when they fed a monkey some deer meat that was infected with CWD. Now, that monkey contracted the disease, and that has led many people who likely had never heard of this disease prior to this, coining the term zombie deer disease. You can look it up yourself. It's all over the place right now. now there are no known reports of humans getting CWD, but people are encouraged not to eat meat infected with the disease. And I spoke with Jasmine Batten. She's the wildlife disease coordinator for the Missouri Department of Conservation. She says this CDC report report has caused a bit of online frenzy, but she says it doesn't change much. While there have been some experimental transmission of CWD to other species, um, the question still really kind of remains, how likely is this to transfer to people? And the bottom line is we don't know today, but the human health experts are not ready to say that the risks are zero. So, Jesse, this report from the CDC isn't saying that humans can contract CWD. It's just saying it's a possibility. Right. Yeah, and for the deer, what exactly does that mean? What does it do to the animal? So scientifically speaking, if I may, 
It's spread by something called a prion, which is just an abnormally folded protein spread from deer to deer in the wild. Now, it's similar to other diseases such as mad cow disease, which caused kind of a similar uproar a few years ago, if you remember, but it slowly deteriorates the animal's brain over time. Now, the conservation department has been testing deer for this since the early 2000s, and on opening weekends of deer season, hunters in many counties are required to get their deer tested after harvesting it. Now, the department still says to follow the CDC guidelines on eating deer meat, getting it tested and such, but they've tracked its slow spread for years, and you can jump on their website to go ahead and look at those latest numbers, but as for a disease that will turn a deer into a zombie, I think we're clear on that front. Nothing to worry about. No walking dead coming to life in your forest near you. All right. Thank you, Jesse. Moving on to political coverage now. Women in Missouri prisons could get free access to feminine hygiene products. Today, House members gave initial approval to this proposal. St. Louis area Democratic Representative Tracy McCreary pitched the idea. She says women in Missouri prisons often can't afford quality tampons or pads, and many instead make their own, which can lead to health issues. A mandate from last year made feminine hygiene products available at no cost at federal institutions. Many states are now trying to do the same. The Missouri State Senate continues to expand protections related to Title IX cases at state universities. Senator Gary Romine, who is a Republican from Farmington, and the bill's sponsor, says that bill would help standardize the Title IX process in the state and creates a clear due process for the accused. However, Jill Patterson, who is the Title IX coordinator at Missouri State University, actually testified against that bill. First, this bill creates an external process that would be harmful to the parties involved, as well as to the universities in several ways, which include, one, it would slow the process down dramatically. Two, it would make it difficult to protect the confidentiality of the proceeding for both parties. And it would add significant cost to the institutions involved. Well, if you want to put a spotlight on Missouri agriculture and the needs of farmers, you can't beat having a Missouri farmer as governor. I don't know if there's ever been a governor that's drove a tractor to work before, but uh, we've got that in the record books. A farm tractor on a Jefferson City street with a security escort. Governor Mike Parson rode a tractor to work today. An active cow farmer from Bolivar, the governor wanted to shine a light on agriculture, Missouri's largest industry. State officials say the farm economy creates more than 378,000 jobs and has 88.4 million dollar impact. Well, we have a traffic report for you now, and it's not Governor Parson driving his tractor to work. MoDOT is actually warning drivers to watch out for pedestrians on North Glenstone while crews fixed a damaged crossing. The, best, the pedestrian signal crosswalk on North Glenstone near Kearney was damaged over the weekend during a car accident and it will be replaced when new parts come in. MoDOT crews do not have a timeline for repairs as of now, so pedestrians are urged to use extreme caution when using that crosswalk until it's repaired. We have some new information for you now. You may remember last night we told you about this iconic photo and the man in this picture actually died a couple days ago. Well, today crews work to clean spray paint off a statue of the iconic duo. It's just sad to see anyone uh, in this day and age choose to purposely do damage to something that brings great pride to the community. Hashtag Me Too was sprayed on the woman's leg. This just days after the man in the original photo, George Mendonca, passed away. It's left some convinced it's a statement, but one that others say could have been voiced elsewhere. Well, this visionary behind the fashion company Chanel has passed away at the age of 85. Karl Lagerfeld had been the director of the company since 1983. The German designer is credited for Chanel's sales of nearly $10 billion and helping to revive the historic brand. Rumors about his health problems started in January when he missed Chanel's fashion show in Paris. Happening now around the Ozarks, a Malayan tiger at the Dickerson Park Zoo has died. Petra, the 18-year-old tiger, was euthanized today after 
her health began to decline. Petra's keepers noticed about a month ago she was slowing down. An exam revealed that she was suffering from renal disease and spinal issues, which are common in an older cat. The average lifespan of Malian tigers is 16 years.